The Audi A5 in our full review here today, another one on that all new generation and especially as the Sportback, you know the Escopé convertible and Sportback here, the five door version. And this one also has a special engine, it's the G-Tron, so the CNG engine or Erdgas as we say in Germany. Of course, everything on exterior, interior and the driving experience will generally account for the Audi A5 and then special Sportback and the CNG feature. Is this actually a good replacement for a diesel, for example? Would you also consider this in comparison to a petrol engine? We will find out together, so join us for all the information on how to go fuel, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. Today with Thomas. Everything in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! The Audi A5 has a very modern shape and at first, at the very world premiere, I was really skeptic because I always have in my head, you know, the Walter da Silva design from the original A5. And here, more design lines all lead to this front grille. But meanwhile, I think the design grew a little bit on me and I think I also like the look. Then the headlights, you're optional with the Matrix LED. You do not have to get also the high beam function. You'll also be just fine with the normal headlights. But they also have here always nice daytime running lights in a claw design. What do you think? 4 meter 73 or 15 foot 5 is the total length of the A5. Here, as you can see, the Sportback with five doors and this Fastback style rear. And I, I think it's even the more beautiful one to me. I think the Sportback is even more beautiful than the Coupé. The Coupé has its own beauty, yes, for sure, but I really like this Fastback rear. Other than that, there's a main design line right here. This is the S-Line package, so the sporty look. We also have bigger rims, as uh, usual. In general, this one's it's a 19-inch, but uh, in general, the um, A5 G Tron comes with a little bit more equipment, for example, one size bigger in the rims. Then the main design line continues right there. This wrap here, I mean, it's for advertising purposes now, but it's just a wrap, uh, it's easy to remove. And um, I don't think that will, it will come from, uh, you know, from, the, from the works. But sometimes it does. You remember, remember the B-Class electric, there everyone had this um, electric paint on there, this, this wrapping about, and everyone was removing it. So sometimes it happens, but in this case, just advertising purposes. Then this fastback rear with a beautiful coupe shaped style. And well, what's underneath? Very interesting. The gas tanks are like here, but then way placed to the middle part. And there are several gas, gas tanks that they really could use all the space. And it adds about 100 kilograms of weight. So yes, it's a little bit heavier, but not that heavy than other comp comparable CNG cars because they have used carbon fiber and CFK materials for the gas tanks, not to make them that heavy. And overall, the car looks pretty light and agile, doesn't it? A horizontal shape here in the rear, also with those tail lights, beautiful LED signature. Also sens sensual shapes right there. For example, here you can see this form. Even the rings, the Audi rings, they are formed in that style, so beautiful detail. The G-Tron itself, well, you just see the logo right here. Everything else is pretty much the same. And you remember maybe that CNG or Erdgas, as we say in Germany, the compressed natural gas, it burns pretty cleanly. So there's no fine dust. And you can really see that also in the inside of the exhaust because it's one of the very rare cars where I would actually go, you know, not sure if it's hot anymore, but I would you know, not hesitate to go with the finger inside the, uh, the, the, the exhaust because it looks that clean. So even visually you can see that it's cleaner than probably a diesel would burn, even a petrol engine. And there is a key which is pretty beautiful I think and slim, but there's also keyless entry we are of course using with those door handles that flip up a little bit. And what is also central that here in this sport bag, like a coupe, we have the window separated no frame around the windows. I'm not even sure, I mean, it doesn't make it really much sense, but it's just something emotional because a lot of great cars have that, you know, very powerful coupes and stuff. So 
why not? Then on the inside of the doors, uh, first of all, the upper part is a little bit softened up, just a little bit, but I think it's pretty fine. Then matte wood is being used here, for example. It's not the sportiest style, but I really love it because it has also a haptical, a really nice natural feeling. Then Alcantara used right there. Automatic window knobs, even they have a nice clicking sound. <laughs> pretty amazing. L just little room right there, but not really for big bottles for small bottles probably and uh, when we look at the interior interesting is that the steering wheel the outer parts are a little bit further towards you than the inner part and that creates this sports steering wheel effect a very modern effect definitely and I think one of my favorite features as for the steering wheel so seats you have three different forms normal Sport as it is right here and S Sport that would be with the S logo then and um, integrated hasp restraints uh, The latter, latter one I would not pick either the normal or the sport seats those both are comfortable with the form in Germany We start with fabric uh, Surface that's the best choice and it also makes sense together with the G-Tron in general to have an all sustainable car however, then you have the Alcantara option in the middle and outside leather and then the full animal skin option but again doesn't make sense for a sustainable vehicle so and let's take a look inside here myself electric seat steering wheel can be adjusted manually like this with a pretty smooth option so you can find a very good position you have also if compared to the a4 yes a4 and a5 they are pretty similar but this one is a little bit flatter, which also is resulting in that it gets really close here with the A pillar. However, inside then, I'm 1 meter 86 or 6 foot 1, there's enough headroom also for tall people. And it's a very comfortable seating position. Not, of course, upright as in an SUV, but overall, you have a pretty good overview. But, you know, the steering wheel form, the low A pillar, not a too huge windscreen, you feel immediately that this is a sporty car so first of all the cockpit overview is defined by horizontal elements wow this is really sort of air vent air vent air vent air vent maybe a little bit too much but a lot of space also for this matte wood element so um, that is really great stuff again i really like it i'm not sure why they had one two three dashboard elements here could have been a little bit gap less but in general it's a little bit softened up so quality wise again we see a lot of great features, great elements, especially my favorite all automotive industry AC unit with nice Audi clicking sounds and also this visualization right there on the screen. And pretty simple to control. I like it that it's still a knob and also buttons to control where, where the air is actually coming from. The steering wheel I've talked about uh, before. I think it's a beautiful form. Also has the really right size. Well, an Alcantara option, I think there is even one. That would be even, even better to me. And also with the round stuff in the middle part. So really well, well done. Instruments and the infotainment screen. Soon we'll take a look. Just one info already right now. The bigger one, usually it starts with 7 inch. This one here, 8.3. This one automatically comes with the G-Tron. So the G-Tron has some more standard equipment. And it's just about 2,500 euros higher in price. So the price of the G-Tron is, comparing to the other vehicles, um, to the other uh, model versions, actually quite attractive, we can say so already. Audi Drive Select is below there to pick the different driving modes. We'll talk about them a little bit when we drive the car. And then in the lower part here, we have, first of all, 12 volt power supply cover, like in a Bentley with a metal knurling around. That is very beautifully done. One of those details you buy an Audi 4. In the front we have beverage holders, they are adaptive and well there is already one space to put the key in but the interesting thing is not only here but there's also this trick that you can put the key in the beverage holders and they are it, it really fits perfectly. I'm not sure if it's just coincidence or if they have really planned it that way but I can tell you it works pretty fine. Funny stuff. The automatic shifting lever in the big engines, you know, the, the 3 liter V6 or also the big 3 liter TDI with more horsepower, you get the converter gearbox here, Astronic, 7 speed Astronic, this is the dual clutch transmission. And in the front, before that, it's this 
turning pressing knob for the infotainment system. We know that from several Audis because there's no touch screen yet. Infotainment system, well, there's no touch, but the menu is quite intuitive. Also, for example, way better than with BMW. With the BMW menu, I always have to search ages. And uh, here, it's actually working quite fast, connecting the phone via Bluetooth or also with the smartphone interface, plugging in for the smartphone mirroring function. The map has short loading times. You see it's already right there. Even in the satellite view, you can get that one optional. You have to book a special package then, or it comes just, I think, one year, including something like that. Later on, it costs extra. But the GPS also does a very good job. You can also go to this car menu, again, switch to the different modes. And then again, one of my favorite features is, um, well, either use the voice control for putting in an address, but also on this driving, turning, pressing button, you can also um, type in an, in an address right there, like, like this, just F. draw it with your hand on this oh. special pad when you go hey. to a Frankfurt, for example, and there we all we are. This is sometimes even faster than using the voice command. Display is not all digital, but you can have the map view in, on the inside. That's pretty good stuff. Then <laughs> Bavarian music or there are the digital speedometer. And then on the left side, you can see this is the G-Tron meter, basically. Well, it's a normal RPM meter. And on the left side, you can have the, uh, the, you know, the CNG tank, how much there is left. And on the right side, the normal fuel tank. So you have both directly in your side. I think overall well done, and I also don't mind this mix of analog and digital parts. So what about the rear compartments? Also, no frames around the windows in the rear. And well, it's actually pretty cozy in here. Headroom-wise, no panoramic roof here. You can get one optionally. But then, of course, it's better for the headroom. Well, the ceiling is going down just a little bit, but it's still okay also for tall people. Knee room wise again, I'm going to be 86 or 6 foot 1, and this is all still okay because there's also two holes in the back side of the seat. Considering the length of the car, we also have vehicles that perform way better for the knee room, that's for sure, but again, for, for adults, totally okay. Um, you know, from the seating position, you see it's a little bit cramped, uh, it's definitely more you know, more comfortable in an SUV, for example, but overall nothing to complain and you have better uh, space than in the Coupe, for example. Well, there are other G-Tron vehicles in the Audi Corporation, also the A4 event, the Estate is available as a G-Tron, and also the A3 G-Tron. But this one here, together with the A4, of course, the one that offers the most space than in the rear. Um, then we have those beverage holders, which go like, a, like this, here we are, Isofix points on both of the outer seats and optionally you can also go for a three zone AC even rear seat heating again all optional. So what do we have here? This is of course here central part of our review G-Tron logo and we see a red cable here other thing you know it's not really so much different to a normal engine layout. This is the normal 2-liter TFSI, as you would also know from other models. Here, a little bit tuned down to 170 horsepower. It will still deliver you enough performance. I can show later on the driving review. But it's actually a good decision to not you know, tune it to the very max. I'm always getting a little bit skeptical if you get too much horsepower out of too little displacement. Not sure if that's too good for the engine. Here, I think, a wise decision. This is a bivalent engine. That means you can drive on CNG and fuel, both. Not really at the same time, but you know, it switches. So it starts with CNG, maybe with a little heating help from the petrol engine first. So first petrol engine to heat it up a little bit, then CNG mainly. When CNG runs out, then it goes to the fuel. The official uh, range is 500 kilometers with CNG and 450 kilometers with petrol. That might be in realistic terms a little bit less of course you know there's uh, the figures on paper but what is clear that the overall range is surely enough even just the CNG range itself probably if you have a CNG gas station nearby or live in city regions where it's widespread or in Italy it will not be any problem to refuel it but it will be of course a crucial factor for sure so very interesting concept and um, 
you know, the, the, as I told, told you earlier, the, all the, the gas stuff, the, the tanks are in the rear. And they also told that they have made it especially basically bulletproof. So they run on 200 bars. That's different from the LPG, the liquid, uh, liquid gas. That one is like low pressure, it's a diff totally different concept. But this one here, 200 bars of pressure. But then again, it's tested for even higher pressures just to be safe. So very interesting concept. And you know, when you're not having any CNG station, you still have the fuel engine right there. So, you know, or well, the fuel tank, same engine. So you have a kind of, kind of safety net for the range. So range anxiety is no problem here at all. Crucial for the A5 Sportback is that you have this hatch opening. So you have something in between an estate and a sedan. You don't have the small hole as for the sedan, but you don't have the square shape of an estate. So you could say best of both something. You see it's very well usable for a sporty and elegant car. That's for sure. This is just another cover you could also um, remove like, like this. And you can see you have even more room. Just, you know, the um, space below there. This is used for the CNG tanks right there. And um, you lose like this, this uh, of height, just a little bit um, on the top part, but not more because what you lose is, you know, the space for the replacement tire possible. Um, so that's actually quite okay. And then you can also flip the seats. You have the maximum of loading capacity like this. You see it's a two third, one third split. And that gives you a lot of flexibility also here with the net. If you're going a little bit sportier, you can put your backpack uh, underneath there. That's really fixed. So overall, I think um, very good result. And again, I really love those fast bags because they have a great design on the outside and still offer you the you know, possibility to load some bulky things in there. And what about child safety? Right here, is it sensitive enough? Whoa, whoa. that's a little bit too harsh and talk. Good torque from the engine, but also pretty much torque here from the mechanism. Maybe a little bit too much here. So let's go with the driving part. This is very interesting here, I can tell you. Because when you start the car, it's not that you would realize, but when you start a car, it's can happen quite often that first the petrol engine is just active for just a second um, for example you know to to heat up the whole system and then the CNG engine pretty fastly takes over but you don't really realize what that would be actually so um, it's actually quite comfortable for the customer in general and you won't really notice Primarily as soon as you have a CNG loaded, it also runs on the CNG all the time. When it is completely depleted, then the car switches over to the petrol drive, but again, you will not really notice. So far, the engine is super silent if you just basically roll it. In general, the A5 has a superb sound insulation. It's a great ride. It is also the standard suspension we have mounted in this very vehicle and it's doing a great job. Good compromise again as in most Audis between sportiness and comfort. It is not, you know, not really a car with, with the best overview because of those very great design lines. That's one disadvantage of it. However, the A-pillar is quite slim. You can see it very well and what's, what's in front of you and stuff. And is a very sporty car already in the base trim. You got the very progressive steering. This one here is, by the way, the optional dynamic steering. So it's a little bit better even than the standard steering. And that also means you got direct control of the car. You really feel like, you feel like a unity of car, driver and, and the road. You don't have to turn the steering wheel that much, also in everyday driving life, for example. So it's also comfortable at the same time, but also sporty. We'll see, no matter in, you see, I'm driving this corner now, going on the motorway, and I hardly have to turn the steering wheel, but still, I have a very precise feeling for it. So that pleases me very, very well. 
assistance systems also. I can set the adaptive cruise control, for example. Doing a good job keeping the distance to the car in front of me. Also the highest build sees the traffic signs and also in comparison to the information we get in the GPS. And then the speed is adjusted accordingly. This G-Tron engine is really silent, I can stress it again. Just a little over eight seconds it needs in the acceleration. And it's actually not too bad. The horsepower has on purpose not been exaggerated, also to guarantee a long-term run. So this car will or should also be used then for if you have a lot of lot of lot of kilometers per year, and then it pays off. The same we've by the way experienced also with the VW Amarok, where they had the same engine that was used in other, you know, for example in Audis, but then with lower horsepower. Sometimes done to ensure a better reliability when the engine is not running, you know, on <laughs> on full power then. Uh, here, I mean, when you cruise, you wouldn't really realize you're driving CNG. So, if I would just close my eyes now and open them again, well, I do see the CNG fuel status here and the G-Tron logo, but other than that, I would not I would not realize at all. Maybe the engine is even more silent to me. I remember in uh, the VW Up, where I had a CNG ride once, Maybe the engine was a little bit louder, but then again, you know, three-cylinder engines, they are natural aspirators, they're a little bit louder anyway. So after you've driven a couple of kilometers with this engine, you can really say you can, with with no doubt, totally recommend it. And I think it's really interesting because more and more people are aware of, you know, I'm not sure how it will continue with the diesels, sometimes forbidden in some cities to drive now with the diesel in some streets already. And this will go on. And of course, we also want to do something for the environment. And I mean, driving an Audi A5 in general is surely something you, you rather do, you know, also for automotive enjoyment. And why not combine it also with a uh, environmental friendly drive? And you've seen this acceleration where I was not even half putting my, my foot on the throttle. And that felt, 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 felt very, very fast. Actually, also the sound was quite okay. So if anyone told me, you're driving the two-liter petrol engine, which is basically that engine we are driving, but you know, just with petrol, and I wouldn't see any hints, I could not tell the difference, even, you know, being, being driven so many different vehicles. And I think that's also a very important factor here. So, uh, of course, it's not you know, an S5. There is always more power, basically. But for a normal A5 customer, where we just have this two and a half thousand euros extra in price, comparable to a diesel engine price, why not? Let me shift back just because I can do that manually here with the shifting pads, and then I can show you some of the performance. Let's see if I just do some midterm sprint, like a third gear from 60 to 80, something like that. That was already 85 for example. Or here now, third gear, let's say from 70 to 90. Nope, that's already, and you see, fast response. Sound-wise, what do you hear that uh, it, this engine then when it runs on CNG, it sounds a little bit more high revving. Um, that's, you know, maybe something, but I mean, the question is again, how often do you really put the pin absolutely down like in the city and if it's not maybe like overtaking uh, on the motorway or something like that but you see the power is there so it's not that you have uh, you know you go for CNG and then you say ah, I can't really drive properly anymore here also now roundabout let's go a little bit dynamic a little bit of screaming of the tires see great dynamic handling from the A5 in general so it is already fun with the standard suspension great sporty car look at how it responds to slalom commands. That is a great, really, really great stuff. Of course, you know, an S version is a little bit stiffer from the suspension. You see, you've seen maybe in that circle that I was tilting just a little bit. But for the everyday driving life, this is perfectly fine. I would actually wish the car to be like this, to have more comfort in everyday driving life. Well, maybe when exiting that, that turn, I could have used maybe a little bit more acceleration, but it's no problem. Also here, we have the Audi Drive Select. So we can go to the dynamic mode, which 
prepares the car for a sporty ride, also goes into the S shifting mode. I could also just go to the S sporty shifting mode and just leave every other parameter like this. And if we're then in this mode, a little bit more exhaust sound, a little bit more low frequency, and then we also have more power when we leave the, you know, the lower RPM regions and the, the car reacts more immediately. So if I'm now, for example, driving forward and then hammer the throttle, you see, before that, it was usually in the higher gear, in the corner, exiting the corner, there, the power is already there. So before that, the car usually shifted down just a little bit, and now in the sport mode, I got that immediately, for example, or if I want to overtake someone here now, that's immediately there. I mean, that's really a, a sporty experience. So it's really great. And I knew this was a very suitable engine, no doubt. And I knew it was basically good and CNG does work, yes. But what I'm really surprised of is how sporty this engine is. That I did not expect. Of course, there are cars that have you know, higher acceleration to, to 100 and, and stuff. But um, especially in those, um, you know, in those regions where you are in the city and then going on the motorway and stuff, this is more than sufficient. So again, the driving part proves here that you can combine some automotive emotion with an ecological drive. Um, about the consumption, of course, we would have, you know, need to compare that on long-term run. Here at the moment it says, but I mean, I did some acceleration tests, 6.1 kilograms per 100 kilometers. The official is three point something. I think the effective will be something between four and five kilograms on 100 kilometers. Uh, there are no, not so many people who can really think, yeah, that means something to me. Because, you know, on the fuel station, if you look at the price for CNG, you cannot compare one unit of petrol to one unit of CNG because the CNG unit has more power in itself than the liter unit of the petrol engine. And so it's really hard to compare in price. But Audi says after 25,000 kilometers, then you are just in the plus, then it pays off to go for this engine if you compare it to, um, to a petrol engine. And um, it's, you know, you can really compare it again to diesel with a big difference when you burn the CNG, there's no fine dust, therefore also better for us all to breathe. The conclusion for today, Audi A5, special A5 Sportback, G-Tron and yeah this is definitely to me probably the best solution at the moment to drive an emotional vehicle which is still ecological at the same time of course if you go for fabric seats on the interior because this engine here has a good clean drivetrain CNG is burning actually pretty cleanly and again if you look at the well to wheel the whole production process then this one is at the moment still better than hydrogen or an electric vehicle. Maybe at the later stage, electric vehicles will be less expensive to produce, will use less resources. But at the moment, if you consider the whole production process, this one is the best you can do at this given moment. And still, the performance was there. There's a lot of calmness on the interior. The car itself is really sovereign. The building quality is great, has a great look. So there's really a lot of positive things about this car to say. The only thing, again, without it, they do not offer animal skin alternatives in the higher trim versions. But in most of the markets, at least in some, you will also get the fabric interior. And then the G-Tron also makes sense. Even, you know, the versatility with the five-door, with the, with the Sportback version, then you can even have some luggage space, which comes close to the versatility of, a, say, uh, of, of an estate actually so yeah I really have to consider um, you know if, if I would be going for a vehicle at the moment it would really actually be a close pick well if I'm not going for a convertible anyway because I love riding with the open top but again I think the biggest surprise to me was I was actually quite convinced of this vehicle even before 
but I did not actually calculate that this car is still so sporty. So yes, a CNG engine can also be sporty. That is also proven today. So I want to hear your thoughts. Have you already had a CNG car once or are you maybe planning to do so? Of course, it will also be about fuel station distribution to, you know, close to where I live. It wouldn't be a problem. I have a CNG fuel station just in front of my doorstep, basically. That wouldn't, wouldn't be a problem to me. In some rural areas, maybe Italy is a main CNG market. That is no problem there at all. It might differ from country to country. Let's see how this technology will evolve. Thank you so much for tuning in and also tune in next time.